Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We want to glorify your holy name for bringing us together again to hear from you, to learn from you. What a privilege. What a time. What an honor that you give us a lot that we can come to your throne of grace every day, every time. We thank you because it's never closed. It's always open for us. But we want to look into your world today. We want to study some characters. We pray, oh God, you will help us to pull out lessons from this study so that, oh Lord, we will be able to replicate the things that are good and, oh God, avoid falling into the mistakes of the past. Come and guide us as we learn. Come and guide us as we are together. Be with us and strengthen us and let the bond between us never be broken. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Brethren, tonight uh, I sent uh, in the during the day uh, some passages which we were supposed to just read, study, so that we can have a discussion tonight. Um, it's, a, it's a very interesting story we have before us tonight from the Bible. And um, we want to discuss that today and share our lessons that we learn. You know, um, of course, some people could be called pastors. Some people could be called bishops. Some people could be called uh, overseers, uh, different names. Um, but there is not one person who knows everything. Um, that's how God has made it, not only for the scriptures, but for everything in life. God has given various people different talents but also he has given different levels of understanding and interpretation of the scriptures and that's why as a church sometimes we want to benefit from that uh, the way the holy spirit will explain something to me could be different from what he could say to one of our brothers one of our sisters but the goal is that we bring all the riches together and we can all benefit from it and we can all learn from it and we can adapt these things, adapt our lives to the word of God and grow and be strong and continue doing the will of God. We'll look at a beautiful story today. Um, so I'll be calling on us. I'll just pull out the list so that I can see it in gallery view. I'll be calling on us today to, to study, to read the word of God. Uh, but also to share what we uh, see in these verses and how what we can take home for ourselves and for others as well. Let's look at the book of Numbers chapter 27. <clears throat> Numbers 27, we'll be looking at the story of the daughters, the daughters of Zelophehad. Daughters of Zelophehad, Numbers chapter 27. I would call on Sister Charity to... Um, to read for us, to start reading for us the first few verses. Sister Charity, Numbers 27, let's start from the first. I think you have double mic. Uh, you have two, two phones uh, connected. Uh, no, not really. Okay. I just have one. No problem. Please go ahead. Numbers okay. 27. Okay. Uh, then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Haifa, the son of Gila, the son of Machai, the son of Menesa, or the families of Menesa, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Malan, Noah, no Honglan, and Malika, and Teza. And they stood before Moses and before Eliza the priest, and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Thank you very Why much. Should... Sorry, let's, uh, let's stop there. Uh, she has read the first four verses, and it has spoken about the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machai, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, uh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters. Now, what, do we, what can we say about that? Just that first part. Anybody, please. What can we say about these daughters, seeing the lineage which they had? 
you've seen the, the way the family has been built up from the past. And it stops somewhere. What can we say about it? Anybody? Uh, I think because if you listen, if you see, they were all sons before them. So these are only daughters. They are all girls. Thank you very much. There were all sons before, and these are daughters. Anybody else? Hello. Yes. Uh, Zenzi. Mm. Grace. Oh, Grace, please. We saw that from this passage that this, uh, the sons they are coming from the line, they are coming from the family of Manasseh, which is the one of the sons of uh, Joseph. Thank you very much. That is it. So uh, as our sister has said, they were all daughters. Uh, they were all sons before, and now they are daughters. But also the lineage from which they came, uh, it was not um, um, just any kind of lineage. Uh, the great, great grandfathers, uh, of the, of these daughters. He's a family. He's, a, he's like a family tree. Yeah. Family, yeah. Thank you. So it, it, it came from somebody and that person was Joseph at the end. And you see that there were a lot of tribes in Egypt, uh, in uh, Israel, but this was from Joseph. And Joseph was very special in the sight of God. So these daughters, they had a very important lineage as well. Uh, they had a very important background and they didn't come from any kind of family. And then let's look at verse two. These are ladies. Who can tell us something about verse two? Sister, Sister Margaret, please. Look at verse two of um, Numbers chapter 27. Okay, any of our sisters as well, brothers as well? What do you see from this? Okay, no, no, no problem. No, no, no problem. Sister Margaret. In verse 2, they say, and they stood before Moses and before Eliezer the priest and before the princes and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, what do you see from that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I see courage. Courage. That is it. Courage, boldness. These daughters, they were standing before the congregation of the tabernacle, before the house of God. And not only that, before the whole congregation and all the congregation, they came to make their petition. What are we learning? No matter what we are, the Bible has told us that we should come more boldly to the throne of grace that you may receive mercy and help in time of need. These ladies came. They were ladies. They didn't look and say, well, we are just girls. But they had that boldness. Now, she has read verse 3, which says, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Let's continue uh, the matter in verse 4. Four. Uh, somebody please brethren pong help us with verse four. Let's go ahead with verse four. Numbers 27, verse 4. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family? Because he has no son. Give unto us therefore a possession among the brethren of our father. Yes, please continue. Okay. And Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren. And thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, uh, who can comment on this? On this part, on the part which he has read. So all the Praise way. Praise the Lord. Yes, it's a charity. has spoken a lot. Let's take this one. <laughs> because there. you asked us to study it. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, what I can see here is that um, you, when you need anything from God, you can remind him. You can remind him of what you want. You can ask God of what you want to get. 
is your right, is your father to ask. So don't be afraid for anything. Thank you. Don't be afraid to ask God of anything. That's what they also spoken about boldness. But look at also in verse three. It says, our father died in the wilderness and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord. In the company of Korah. But died in his own sin. He died in his own sin and had no sons. What can we see from that? This man died in his sin. He did something evil. He he didn't do, he he was not in the rebellion of Korah. But he didn't die during the rebellion of Korah, you know, when uh, the Lord's wrath came upon those who rebelled. But he died in his own sin. He had no sons. Yes. But still, his daughters came to ask for an inheritance for a man who had died in sin. They came to the place of God to ask for that. There are some a lot of lessons we can learn from here. Sister Afyong is uh, unmuting her mic, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, what I see there is that it does not matter where you're coming from, your background. Uh, God has given everyone an opportunity. And even from the study itself, it does not matter your, your gender or where you're coming from, your color. It doesn't matter when we come to God and ask for help and ask for his blessing. He will always give to us. Thank you very much. It doesn't matter from where, uh, where you come from. Uh, it doesn't matter your background, your past. If you come to get God for help, God will also help you. Yes, any other contribution? Adam sinned against God and the fate of man was, oh, this man has sinned. Oh, the wages of sin is death. And then Adam had a lineage, a generation. He had made multiple children. And we are part of the descendants of Adam. But he was, he sinned against God. He did what God did not like. The same thing here, we can see from this man. Zelophehad, he died in his own sin. But his daughters came to God. So what we learn here is that our past, where we come from, our traditions, cultures, family, it could be that it's from a... Uh, an idolatrous background, a sinful background, that if we rise up, God's mercy will always be upon us in Jesus' name. That's what we have learned uh, from this verse. And I want us to, 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 to take that home. Now, that's verse, verse 3. And now verse 4, it says, Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family, because he had no sons. Give us, therefore, a possession among the brethren for our father. What can we say? For, what can we take from that? These were ladies. This had never happened before. I mean, if you read, maybe if you, I would have also added that we read Numbers chapter 26, where you saw that they were, uh, God was giving these commandments about how the inheritance, because these people, they were camped in the plains of Moab. They had not yet inherited the promised land, but it was already been, God was giving instructions on how uh, the, the, the promised land was supposed to be divided. And God said, look, um, you will divide it up in the tribes according to the fathers of the various tribes. So if the father was not there, then of course, automatically the son was there. And God gave the names from this tribe, this person, this person, God, he, uh, to, Eli- to Moses and Eliezer, and the, the number, the children of Israel in the plains of Moab near Jordan, near Jericho. So that's how God made it. And at that time, there was no provision for women. Uh, There was no provision for for a man who didn't have children. That's the first thing. So if a man died and didn't have any children, there was nothing made in provision for him. But also if a man died and he only had daughters and no sons, well, there was no father anymore because God didn't mention mothers. God mentioned fathers. So there was no longer a father uh, there. Let's look at uh, chapter Numbers 26, just one chapter behind. Numbers 26, and 
you will read, we'll be reading from verse 60. Numbers 2 6. So Numbers chapter 26. Okay. And and we'll read verse 52. Can somebody help us to read from verse 52? Numbers 26 from verse 52. Okay, I read. Yes, right, John. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto this land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To everyone shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the yeah. land shall be divided by lot according to the names of the tribes of their fathers. Verse 56, please. Okay, verse 56 says, according to the Lord shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. So God was trying to be uh, in, in this place uh, equal, huh? just trying to be fair. He said to those who are many, you give them more land. To those that are few, give them uh, less land. But the way he said it, he said, notwithstanding the Lord shall be divided in verse 55, uh, the, the land shall be divided by lot according to the names of the tribes of their fathers. They shall inherit. And, they shall, and, and according to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided to many of you. So there was no provision made here for people who didn't have fathers and for those who were just daughters. So those daughters saw that, oh, since our father is no longer here, our father will not uh, inherit this land. And since he didn't have a son to take after him, well, he will also not inherit, well, nobody will inherit this land. So our father will be buried, he'll be forgotten, and there will be nothing to him. So they approached Moses and said, Moses, this cannot happen. Uh, something has to be done. What can we say about this? They approached Moses about this. Something had been had taken place. God was the one who had put this law. So it was not a law that came from uh, the government or that came from a sinner or things like that. This was the law from God. What can we learn here, but they challenge this. Anybody? I think what I see is that uh, something has not been happening before does not mean it, 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 there's no time that it will not start. So one should not be afraid uh, to ask for things that have not happened. Thank you very much. If something is unprecedented, it has never happened. It doesn't mean it will never happen uh, in future. So don't be afraid to be the first. Yes, what can we also learn from here? Remember, this was a law made by God. Hello. I think... Uh, yes. Uh, what I think to that, you know that um, the daughters knew that God is so merciful. So God can have mercy upon them. And our God is a God of impossibilities. So he can always turn things from impossibilities to, possi to possibilities. So they believe that God can do something. That's why they plead to Moses and the priest so that they should take it to God in prayers. So they believe, then I also see that they also trust in the priests and Moses that when they will be able to get to God and summon their case and they will, they will have, it will be positive at the end. So that's what I think. So I also feel that they had faith in what they are going to, their, their presentation. They had also faith. Because they went to Moses and they went to the priest. So they had that faith that God is going to do something. Thank you. They had faith. These ladies, as you have read before, they had courage. But they also had faith. They believed something will happen. Now, uh, it's crucial for us to understand this part. It was the law set by God. It was the law that made the male to be dominant, to be ahead. Uh, but... To the women, it was an unfair law, even though this law was set by God. But to the women, it was an unfair law. So these ladies, they had faith, they had courage, and they rose up and went. And even though it was set by spiritual principles, um, they saw that something could be done. What can we understand from it? Some, some people might say, well, 
Um, we never see women ministering. Uh, we never see women preaching. So this is how it is. This is the law. This is how it stands. We don't see that happening in the church. Um, so it cannot change. No, it is. The Lord is flexible. Now, there's only one thing God is not flexible with, is sin and holiness. Apart from that, if something is being done, I say, well, I say this and it doesn't help. Like you remember in Acts chapter 6, the, the murmuring uh, among the people because the widows were neglected in the daily distribution of food. They said, well, this is not correct. And then the, the apostles came together and they sorted out the problem. So uh, the leaders should be always open to listen to what uh, people say. And do not be afraid. If you see something wrong, you see something which is not fair, or maybe we thought about it well, but you just have a different idea. God has put something else in your mind. Bring it forward and let's discuss. That's why we're having an open discussion and not just one way preaching. I pray God will give us that faith of those daughters in Jesus' name. Now let's go back to where we were reading. Um, and let's look at verse 5. Verse 5, 6, and seven again verse five six and seven our brother has read it i'll read it again and moses brought their case before the lord and the lord spake unto moses saying the daughters of zelophehad speak right thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them what can we see about moses the way moses handled this what can we say about that sister esther if if you are there Now, remember these ladies, they met Moses in front of the congregation, in front of the priests, uh, in front of all the princes. They went there and said, Moses, they challenged Moses. They said, Moses, this cannot be. You cannot do this. Um, look at Moses' reaction. Moses had heard from God. Moses was sure about this law. Um, he was totally convinced this is what God says. This is what it is. Look at his reaction to the ladies. What can we learn from that? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, for me, this place is just telling me like these women, they brought their, their issue to Moses and Moses took those issues to the Lord. It's just telling us like before we make any step or before we do anything, we should have to first of all put it before the Lord. Thank you very much. Yes, we should Sister take Margaret. it. Yes, Sister Margaret, please. Uh, just like what my sister was saying, Moses proved himself to be a, a real leader, a leader in every area of his life. That is, with the human being, the, the people he was, he was leading with, he has knowledge about them. He also has knowledge about God. And being... In, in between these people, he has to satisfy these people and also not go against God. So in this situation, he did not tell them, you don't have right because you are women. You don't yes. deserve He gave them courage, gave them the assurance, yes, but I cannot do anything about it. Let me go back to God Almighty. So he brought the issue to God, who will give him the, what, the final decision on what to tell these ladies. Thank you very much. Now, all of what we have said is, is correct. Um, somebody is trying to talk. Yeah, that's Claire. Okay, Sister Claire, if you're not speaking, please can you meet me? I, am, I, am, I, am, I want to contribute. Are you getting me? I understand, but somebody else is, uh, has a mic not muted. Thank you, Sister Claire, please go ahead. Yeah, so what I got from this passage is that um, I just felt that Moses had compassion and he had empathy because Moses got the law and it was the law and he could have shown them out and told them this is it and just go and live with it but he had compassion he had empathy and he still went on pleading their case before God so I really love the fact that he had compassion on their case. Thank you very much now all what we have said again uh, once, once again uh, is correct Moses was a humble leader Moses was a leader who had the mind of God in him and Moses did not send them away and say you are women how dare you come up especially coming in front of the church, uh, in front of the, the priesthood to ask this. When Moses humbly went back, and that's why you see in First Peter chapter 5, 
Bible is saying, talking about leaders, about oh, shepherds. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 3, please, we can mute your mics if you're not talking. Mm -hmm. Verse 3 of, of Peter chapter 5, uh, God says that neither, being, uh, neither as being lords over them, uh, over God's heritage, but being examples, leaders, humble. Moses took the matter to God, though there were ladies. And what do we learn from that is um, we should not be proud as leaders. We should be humble. If somebody brings something to you, take it to the Lord in prayer. So our sister has said, I said, God, what can I do in this case? Even if there is a law, that law says, this is it. God has said, or the church has said, this is the way we do it. Somebody comes and says, but this is not fair that we take it to the Lord, and then God reacts to it. Verse 7, let's read from verse 7, I'll ask again Sister Cynthia, please read from verse 7 of our text, Numbers chapter 27, verse 7 and to verse 11. The daughters of Zelophehad speak right, thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if he has, if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen, kinsman, that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it, and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment, as the Lord commanded Moses. Thank you very much. Who wants to comment on what our sister has read? Our sister. Praise the, praise the Lord. Yes, Brother Peter. Yeah, is uh, the comment here yeah, is um, um, is what God command. It's a command of God. It's not a command of man because God gave the Moses the command. This is what you will do. It doesn't come from Moses. This is pure command of God. And Moses followed the the command. That is what I saw in this. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. So Moses followed what God had told him to do. And of course, yes, very, uh, uh, followed God. What can we learn from, from the accounts which our sister has read? Uh, what I learned from here is God has promised these people that he is going to give them a possession. Mm -hmm. Possession to every one of them. He did not you do not make any segregation, regardless of who you are. So it, whether you are a man or a woman or not, God says, in fact, if the person hasn't a kid, children, give it to his family member. God is a God of commitment. If only we obey him in us and take him as, we, as, as our savior, his promises in our life will come to pass. Amen. Thank you so much. Any other contribution? Yes, praise the Lord. Yes, Sister Claire. Yeah, so what I got from this is that um, despite the fact that there wasn't any law made for such a case, but because the daughters were so courageous, they presented themselves, um, God had to create another law just for them to get their possession. So I just really love the fact that because of their boldness, because of their confidence, they just went forth and there was a way. So in our life, um, you might not find maybe things are difficult and all that, but because of you, there will be if you if you just bold and with God, special laws will make just for you a part um, because yeah, you have favor from God. So that's what I got from that. Thank you very much, and and she is rather correct uh, because um, you see here what these ladies had done this daughter so was before uh, there was no there was no provision for uh, inheritance of the next of kin there was no provision for inheritance for ladies for women uh, but because of what they did uh, because of 
their resilience, because of their boldness, because they said, our father cannot go and we would not have anything. God created a new law. And you can look at this and you see it in the way that it transcends throughout the Bible. The Bible, in, in the beginning, the gospel, uh, God, heaven, spiritual things was for the Jews. God had chosen Israel. It was his chosen land. And that's how God made it. Why God made it like that, we cannot say. So all the other lands, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, all those were enemies of Israel, the Philistines, they were seen as outsiders, outside the covenant. When Jesus Christ came, uh, Jesus Christ came, he died on the cross. God said, that's, this, is, this exception is done. I'm going to open it now to the whole world. Uh, that's why the Bible says, behold, the Lamb of God, that they get away the sin of the world. God has given us that openness. So as these daughters, they, they, they presented their case, and Moses listened to them, took the case to God, and God said, he set a new law, a fairer law. So if you would, if you have something in your mind, if you think things can be better, bring it, speak it up, and things could be better and could not only benefit you, but could benefit more people. And these daughters, they were talking about the physical inheritance. But the way we can relate it to our lives is that we have a more sure word of prophecy. We have a spiritual inheritance. Our inheritance is in heaven. And just as these daughters, they fought for their inheritance. They didn't let it go. They didn't let circumstances take it away from them. They didn't let the cares around them to distract them from it. They were bold. They, they braved the odds. We adapt to we deny. We adapt to it. Uh, it's coming to our mics. Yeah. Oh. They brave the odds to go yeah. and, and fight for what was rightfully theirs. Christ has died on the cross. He has given us the grace of God, which is available. And I pray God will help us to what? fight and strive for it. As they are forced, let us walk out our oh, they, they don't take care of yeah. Yeah. Now let's go to Numbers, that's the first part. Let's go to Numbers chapter 36, because uh, also these daughters are mentioned there and the study will not be complete without them. Numbers chapter 36, and we'll pull a few lessons from here and then we'll pray. And um, I will ask Sister, Sister Charity to start reading for us again. She has gone quiet for a while. Um, from verse 1 please uh, verse one. and the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gela and the son of Micah the son of Manasseh of the families of the sons of Joseph came near and speak before Moses and before the princes the chief fathers of the children of Israel and they said the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel and my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of the Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of their fathers and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children, the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall the inheritance be made be put unto the inheritance of the tribe where unto they receive. So shall the inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. Thank you very Moses. much. Thank you. Yes. What's happening here? Brother Frimpo. What can we see happening here? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so here we see uh, God explaining the conditions for their inheritance. Yes, uh, this was not God explaining it. Something was happening here. Who wants to tell us what's happening here? Uh, praise the Lord. Sister Josephine, yes. Yes. Uh, this place is just explaining to us, we know we as women, when we are married, our name automatically changes. And mm -hmm. when it changes, you start bearing the name of your husband. So these women, maybe they are some of them also that, uh, that are married. So this place is just explaining it like, if there is anyone that has married to another tribe, carrying another name, 
that whatever that is uh, being given to them from the inheritance of their father automatic, automatically goes with her to the uh, uh, family or to the tribe where she is married. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Um, what our sister is saying is correct, but it, it, it was not, it was, it was a complaint. So what happened here is, okay, we have read in, verse 20, in chapter 27, they were finally given the inheritance um, and they, they got the land which their father was supposed to get. Uh, they were promised that inheritance. But then in verse 36, uh, since God had now opened it up for marriage, for, for women, sorry, women to get inheritance, to get land. Um, in chapter 36, now we are seeing the people of Manasseh, they said, look, we have, you have divided the land as you, may, you remember in chapter 26, God was saying, for those who are few, give them less. For those who are more, give them more land. So imagine the tribe of Manasseh, if they were few, and then some of their land had been given to their women. So women, men, they had land. When these women, they get married, they have to demand, the woman has to be subject to uh, the man. And as our sister said, they will bear the name of the man. And of course, whatever they have becomes that of the man. So it means that that land, which the woman inherited will then be to that man and if the man is not of the tribe of Manasseh where the women are from it means that that land will be taken to another well not taken physically but it will belong to another tribe so it means that if for example uh, God has divided us and says somebody you take uh, Geldrop another person takes Helmon another person takes Eindhoven then the person in Helmon is a lady she goes and marries a man in Eindhoven. Well, Helmon will become will be called Eindhoven now because it's under Eindhoven. Then the people of Helmon will have nothing. So that's why they went and complained to, Mo, to Moses and said, Moses, what can we do? If these ladies who are now landowners, they go and marry outside, our population will go down, our land, our inheritance will go down. When the year of Jubilee comes, the year of um, restitution of the land, uh, as I said, when the, the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall your inheritance be put on to the inheritance of the tribe where they were received. So your inheritance shall be taken away from the tribe of Israel. And let's look at the response of Moses shortly before we pray. Um, Sister Stella, are you there? If Sister Stella is there, please can we read for us? Um, Numbers 36 verse 5. Thank you for putting on your video. Just you have to just unmute your mic now, and then you can read for us. Sorry, I'm at work. Uh, I don't okay, have. Thank you. All right. Anybody can help us. Numbers thirty-six, verse five. Queen. Numbers thirty-six, five. Yes. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, "The tribe of the sons of Jacob has said it well." And then verse 6, it says, This thing, this is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For everyone of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesses an inheritance in any tribe of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance be removed from one tribe to the other, but every one of the tribes shall keep uh, of the children, and every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance, even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. So they married finally uh, to their tribes. What can we learn from the way it was resolved? What can we learn from the way this was resolved? Brother Joe? Is Brother Joseph around? Yeah, what, what I see here is that... Uh... When the when that problem uh, came, when the people of the tribe came to complain, 
Moses looked for a way to, to solve this uh, problem. So you can see he used the wisdom that the land that is divided, every, boy, every, every tribe's land cannot be transferred to another uh, other people. So it was easily resolved. Whether if you are a lady who owns the land, then you must marry from your kids, from your tribe. So, but if you don't own the land, you have a brothers, you can marry from any other tribes. Thank you, uh, just as I've explained it. But what do we learn from this? What do we learn? We have different, let's look at it today. We have different churches. Um, there's deeper life, there are other churches. Um, what can we learn from that? I've given uh, just a small hint. Uh, uh, what I think what I learned from this um, is that uh, anywhere you 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 belong, try as much as possible to follow the rules and regulation of that place. Thank you. Yeah, follow the rules. Yes, Sister Charity. Uh, what I learned from this is, uh, especially like when you just give a little information, like different churches, domination. So I'm like like this, like as a woman, it's always good to marry from where you are worshiping, so that you have you'll be on a flat uh, on a, a flat farm. You'll be on the same level, so you, the understanding and everything, the love and everything will be growing. So it will make the church more a bigger growth and then uh, understanding and more love between. That's what I learned. Thank you very much. Sister Josephine, you wanted to contribute? <laughs> no, I don't have. I will maybe a question. If um, question, maybe later. We'll, we'll take questions after um, uh, maybe a different time. Now, what uh, what is, is clear here, as our sister has said, uh, some things are God made some things easy. Where God has placed you, he wants, he has a reason for putting you there. Um, and he has a plan for you to be there. He has something to accomplish with you in that place you are. Uh, if the women were to go out and marry in a different tribe, even though those tribes were still tribes of Israel, uh, they would lose their inheritance, right? They would, they would lose their inheritance because you cannot be an owner of a land in Manasseh or in, uh, in, in any other tribe, Judah or whatever, and then you marry from a different tribe, from Benjamin, for example. No, if you leave, you lose your inheritance. Uh, so if you are there, God said, marry from that place where you are, so that this place keeps its inheritance. Uh, so God has, where the Lord has placed, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembly of the righteous. Uh, God is feeding us. Let's learn from this. And... Um, God also said that let's not be unequally yoked. We don't believe us. Let's not go outside. Uh, where God has placed you, it is good. Mm. A lot of people say, well, the child always thinks that the soup outside of the neighbor is better than what they have on today, uh, what they have at home, because they have it every day. Uh, but that is not always the case. The grass is not always greener on the other side. What have we learned from today? What have we learned from today? I just want one or two people to give us some lessons. And you see the reaction of the daughters as well. Sorry. Uh, at the end of it, you see the reaction of the daughters. They married in the land, in the tribe of Manasseh. In verse 11, for Mala, Tiza, and Hogla, America, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, the sons of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. Uh, our inheritance is in heaven. Uh, if we move out, we lose that inheritance. Where God has placed us, that is where our inheritance are. Uh, and God wants us uh, to take hold of it, preserve it. Our inheritance is not land. Land, is, it will fade away. But our inheritance is heaven at the end of the day. What are some of the lessons we have learned? One or two lessons. Hallelujah, Brother Peter. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, and uh, I made something when the first bring the matter to the table and uh, there was a confusion. And then Moses take the matter to, to God he, because there is nothing too hard for God to do. If any difficulty we are passing through, we cannot solve it. We have to take it to God and uh, for God to solve the problem for us. Thank you very much. That is a very good lesson we have learned. Any other lesson? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Esther Cynthia. I learned that it doesn't matter where you're coming from, the background or the tribe or the culture, or the tradition. Uh, God is merciful, just as the daughters, they were bold to submit their request and to Moses and they give it to the Lord in prayer. And at the end, they got what they requested. So as brethren, we have to be bold and leave aside your tradition, your culture and once we, re we submit our request to the Lord, he will grant us what we desire. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes. Any other lesson? The yes, lesson? sir. I, I, have, I just have one important one I, I hope everyone gets from me. When the minister of God in your church, when he tells, when you go to him for counseling, just like these ladies went to Moses and the priest for counseling, and when you are giving advice, it's always good for us to follow it because you go there for a purpose. And you were given an answer. So, but these ladies, they surely did what they were told. And because at the end of the day, they were happy. So we should always listen to our ministers and whatever we go to them for counseling. Thank you very much. And also you see here that the ladies, they went with, the, with an issue they had. Yeah, they were listening to. But when God also gave them commandments, God, they, they, they followed the commandments of God. So it's... It's never a one-way thing. We cannot say uh, we would only get from God. God heal me. God preserve me. God bless me. God give this. I need this. God give me inheritance. But then when God says you have to lay this aside, you have to give to the house of God. You have to sacrifice your time, your energy, your money. That we say, no, we will not do that. We only want to enjoy. The Christian life is not only one way. It is both ways. Um, that's something we learned also from here. One final lesson before we pray. Uh, what I learned, we should hold on to the inheritance. We should not let it go. Thank you very much. And the inheritance is not land. Uh, our inheritance is in heaven. The Bible says, set your affection on things above. Do not lay your treasures on earth, but lay the treasures in heaven. Where there is no thief who can break in or steal, there's no rust, there's no corruption. And whatever you pray, you walk in heaven will be there waiting for you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this evening. We have all contributed. We have all learned. I have been, I have learned, I have been blessed from our contribution. And I hope you have been blessed as well. Commit ourselves to the hands of the Lord. They are, the hand of God is not short. Neither is his ear blocked that he cannot hear us. God is willing. He is there. Is there to hear us? And we may think that things are the way they are. They cannot change. But with God, all things are possible. We listen to what our brethren have said. Whenever, whatever issue you have, take it to the Lord. Remember these ladies, they did not murmur. They did not sit behind our saying, but we don't have, we don't have. They were complaining and they were gossiping to different people, going from tribe to tribe and gossiping and saying, we don't have any inheritance. They didn't do that. They took the matter to the to the Lord. They took their matter to the servant of the Lord. Pray that God will help you. If you have anything in your heart, any complaint, any grudge, anything that is not making you to serve God the right way, say, God, give me the grace. I will not keep it. I will not hold it. If you have any grudge against your brother, if you feel you have been offended by anyone in any way, if you feel you are not being treated fairly, you are being given unfair treatment. You are not being given your rights as a woman. If somebody is disrespecting you, whatever is happening in your life, say that God help me. I will not keep it. I will not keep it in grudge. I will approach the person. I will approach the man of God. Say, God, give me the grace. This is one of the things that we learned from these daughters. They were bold. They were humble. They were righteous. They didn't turn. They, did, they were not grudging. They, were, they went and met the right quarters and 
place their request before the Lord. The Bible says that let us lay our request before the Lord with prayer and thanksgiving. Let our request be known before God, not with murmuring, not with backbiting, not with anger, not with gossip, not with grudging. God will help you. Say, God, give me the grace. Lord, this does not to do every time, oh Lord, not to gossip, not to bad mind, not to turn around, not to slander, oh God. But I pray, oh God, you give me these ladies, they were not hypocrites, brethren. They were not hypocrites. They didn't just say, oh, we are going to rebel, or they didn't say, we are going to just live as if everything is right. They were not hypocrites, but they were following the will of God. They went and said what they had to say, and they were listening to. Pray that God is going to help you. Jesus, you want to pray. If there is any inheritance that you do not have access to, you remember the daughters of Zelophe had their inheritance was a land, the land where their fathers had to grow, the land where their father's name was taken from. You will pray and commit yourself to God and say, Lord, if there is any inheritance, Lord, that I am missing today, inheritance of good health, inheritance of financial benefits, inheritance of, of joy, inheritance of a wife, inheritance of a husband, inheritance of children, inheritance of all the blessings that are in the word of God. If there are any of these inheritance that you do not have access to today because of one law or the other, because the doctor has said, oh, you cannot, this cannot happen, you cannot have children, or because they have said some, they have said somewhere in a village that you cannot get married, or just because you are not, it has not happened to you. Just because you are there, oh, say, God, I want to claim my inheritance. As those daughters went to Moses, they went and knocked on the door of Moses, and they asked him, Moses, this cannot be. We cannot be left out of the plan of God. Oh, my brethren, there's spiritual inheritance, not just in heaven where we are going, but also on earth, God has said he will grant us all things according to his riches in glory. In Christ Jesus, he will supply all our needs. That is an inheritance. He wishes above all things that will prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. That is an inheritance. We shall be the head and not the tail. That is our inheritance. The children that God has given you, my brother, my sister, they shall be for signs and for wonders. That is an inheritance. The Lord shall give you long life. He shall satisfy you with long life. That is an inheritance. You want to say, God, all those inheritance, all the things you have promised to me, all the things you promised me, Lord, not because I'm a woman, not because I'm from this tribe, not because I just gave my life to Christ it has not been long, that I do not deserve it, Lord. I deserve it, Lord. I claim it, Lord. I come before your throne of grace this evening and I say, God grants me according to my inheritance in Jesus' name. That's all in the name of Jesus. If there is any inheritance, oh God, that we have basic, oh, the Bible says that come boldly because you do not have a nine priest who cannot be touched with it is bedding. Always he was tried, he was tested, just like we are. Oh, the Bible says, then come down boldly, come down boldly to the throne of grace that you might obtain help, you might obtain mercy and help in time of need. Say, God, I'm coming boldly. I come to your throne of grace this evening. God, I will not go back unto you. Bless me. Most uh, do, uh, Jacob at Jabok, he prayed and he was blessed. The Lord touched him. Hannah prayed and God did something to her life. She got a child. Even though she had been barren for so long. The same thing with Elizabeth. She got a child. If you pray today, God will knock or will open up the door to you. Jabez had a bad name, but his name was changed. That was his inheritance, and God changed it. The inheritance of those ladies was to, to have nothing, to have nothing, but when they knocked on the door of heaven, the law was changed. Even though the law was put by God, like Hezekiah, the law turns, the Lord, he turned his face against the wall, and God helped. In that name of in verse 20, in, in, the, in the next chapter, which we have read, we have seen how they obey the word of God. Pray that God will help you to obey God's word. Sometimes what God can say could seem difficult. It could seem tough. But when God has given it, we should obey it. If God has, if we have knocked on the doors, door, doors of heaven and God has given us a law. Oh, you remember there were 12 tribes in Israel, but these ladies, they had to stay 
stick to one tribe. They were they had to sacrifice for the inheritance, for the good thing that they had to do, for the great salvation, for the great inheritance that we have. God wants us to stick to the gospel. God wants us to stick to Christianity. God wants us to stick to righteousness. God wants us to stick to one place to do the will of God. This is also how we can compare it with, 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 with what we are doing. God said, if you want to have this inheritance, if you want to keep this inheritance, you cannot go outside of Manasseh to get married. You cannot go and entangle yourself with people from external places. Pray and say, God, I will obey you. If you want me to stay, I will stay. If wherever you lead me, I will go. If you want me to abide and tarry until I be endued with the spirit of the Lord, God, I will abide, I will tarry, and you will fill me in the name of Jesus. Pray that God will help you, that your mind will be humble. You will be ready to obey him. God, I will be ready to obey you in the name of Jesus. The daughters were bold, they were courageous, they had faith, but they were humble, they were ready to obey. They did not say, oh, we are the ones that, go, we, we are the first women that made that there should be inheritance in all the land. How can Paul ask us to go and only marry here? They did not say, well, the first people that made that there should be this law. We spoke out. They, they were not proud. They were humble. Say, God will give you that grace. Humble yourself and God will lift you up. I pray oh God give you the grace, oh Lord. Always be humble, oh God, in everything. Humble, oh Father. Despite the fact that God had granted them land, when God asked for them, they obeyed. Despite the fact that they were rich, they had land now. They could say, well, we have this. Uh, it didn't stop them. Say that, pray, that when God will give you all those inheritances, when God will bless you with all those things that you're asking for, when God will require something of you, that you will give it. Oh, you will not be a, that sad rich man. That sad rich man that came and said, oh, I have done everything. I have paid my tithes. I have paid this and, and I'm very well done. What can I do? God says, go and sell your goods and give to the poor and come and follow me. And he went and he was sad because those things, they were more important to him than salvation. They were more important to him than heaven. You pray that when God has prospered you, you will not abandon God. You will not be disobedient because of the prosperity. You will not be disobedient because of the pride. You will not be disobedient to God because of the riches and the greatness you have on earth. You will always be humble and, and obey. No matter how difficult the task, no matter how difficult the question, no matter how difficult the, the instruction, the request will be from the Lord, you will always obey. <laughs> Worship the Lord. Thank you for tonight. Give him the glory, give him the honor, the adoration for he has done it. For in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, we want to thank you tonight. We want to bless the Holy Name. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for teaching us, Lord, from this very important story. Opening up our eyes to see humility. To see how ladies with their boldness and their courage and their faith, they could acquire what deserve. We pray that you will help us, O oh God. We will not sit back, who will struggle, who will fight for our salvation with fear and with trembling. And Lord, all those of us who are missing one or two inheritances, one or two things that you have for us on earth, that Lord, as we have come to you today and prayed, the Lord, you open up those doors and will inherit what is rightfully ours. We pray for humility, O oh God, after all the blessings, after receiving from you, after having God, in everything you want us to get, give us the humility. Give us obedience. Give us hearts of children to obey you, O God, in every way. Because, O God, at the end, it is going to heaven that matters. Thank you, Lord, for your head and answer. Come and guide us as we go. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Please, you can mention your name for the attenders.